In the tree-lined suburbs just outside of Detroit, the Coleman's, Ashley Antoinette and Jaquavis, a married couple who are high school sweethearts, write New York Times bestsellers together. We don't like to let great ideas escape us. So we got this thing where we just, every idea, every log line, every synopsis, every title, we put on sticky notes. Between them, they've written 44 books in 11 years. When you walk into a room, when you're a New York Times bestseller, you walk in with power. You know, so it's like walking in with 10 goons behind you, right? Because <laughs> you, you have that, that stamp of approval that X amount of people love your work. Yeah. So you have an audience. What was your first book deal like? Uneventful, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> in the beginning, you're writing strictly off passion. You know, nobody's paying you big bucks to write your first book. Flynn is the mother of our creativity. Yeah, it's the source. It's where we pull everything from. Ashley and Jaquavis live an hour from where they grew up, and they make a point to visit as much as they can. Like, every day, that's how the trash looking every day. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, because you got to live out of water bottles, see? Yeah. That's crazy. The couple met in a cinematic manner befitting their books. Likewise, how you doing? Quavo was running from an undercover cop with nine ounces of cocaine. Yeah, right there. Okay, right there. That bush right there. As he was tackled onto the ground, he tossed the package into Ashley's yard. She hid it, told no one, and returned it to him later that night. The story became their first book, Dirty Money. Their subsequent novels, thrillers and sprawling crime sagas, aren't unlike your usual best-selling fare, yet they're designated as urban or street lit. What do you think about the moniker, like, street lit? It is what it is. I know street literature, it gets a black eye, right? Because we're writing about these seedy underworlds in the black market. But really, the only thing we're doing is holding up a mirror. So it kind of hurts when you see the truth. So they frown on it because they don't understand it. And it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to digest. This was the thing about reading books. There were no characters that looked like us. Yeah. Like, we came up on, he loves John Grisham. Yeah. And I was reading, like, as a very young girl, like the Sweet Valley High books. And right. I was escaping this world, this violent, gritty city that I was in. I was reading about the white picket fences, but those girls didn't look like me. They didn't talk like me. They didn't they have like a mama like mine. You know, yeah, none of that. Aryan. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't relate to any of that. So when we decided to write, we wanted to write what was real to us. We wanted to write about faces like ours, about circumstances like ours. At what point do stories created by African Americans about African Americans get to just be stories? The most profitable movie of the year is Get Out by Jordan Peele. Shonda Rhimes and Lee Daniels are kingmakers. With a devout fan base and prominent placement at major booksellers, it's no wonder that the Colemans are being tapped for TV. Not prestige or niche TV, but mainstream network shows. We signed a deal with uh, NBC mm -hmm. Universal, and we signed a deal with Warner Brothers. So we'll be creating for television. What kind of stories can we expect from you guys for TV? We're writing family shows. We're writing um, YA shows. We're writing, of course, a street show, yeah, which is phenomenal. Fiction. Yeah, we're writing science fiction. Yeah. So we're not limiting ourselves at all. That's the beauty about Hollywood. It takes us off a leash. That's Vice News Tonight for Thursday, November 2nd. 